Okay, so once you've configured uh, protection, you will see that your protection status change uh, for the API would change to active and you would see the, uh, the server names API and dashboard. So now that we have it running, uh, let's uh, go uh, to my uh, Postman client and actually invoke the API and, and see protection in action. So uh, for um, demo purposes, I have two endpoints uh, for this API. I have deployed one version of the API with the protection on the one URL and the other one without the protection. And so I can easily switch between the protected and unprotected. The only difference is the URL. Uh, and using that, I can compare and contrast their behavior. So when it's a regular API call, for example, this call to register user, there's going to be no change. So for example, I can say I'll register user one using direct call. Here's my API call successful. I can do the same for a protected API. And you'll see that again, it works just fine. So same, same performance, same, same results. However, when I start making calls outside of the contract, that, that, that is when the things change. So for example, say instead of post, I send a get. So for example, this API, if I send direct, uh, it will not work. However, it sends you back HTML. That, that's a bad way. That's a bad way to handle requests because that kind of uh, HTML response can give attackers additional information. Now it's not, they know that it's some sort of a web container that you are using behind the scenes. They can figure out what kind of web container uh, they can potentially get additional information from cookies and headers and then reuse them and so on. So it's, it's a bad, bad way to respond to unexpected calls. Obviously with a protected version, this gets stopped. This gets blocked by foot to crunch API firewall. You get the, the forbidden response and that doesn't even reach that backend. So you don't, you don't get that information leaking. Uh, same thing with different kind of parameters. So for example, uh, say you send us an unexpected header. For example, the uh, infamous Equifax breach happened by an injection uh, code sent in the content type header. But here, if it's something unexpected, uh, whatever, injection. Uh, if it's something unexpected, again, it, it would just not work. Uh, we would just block it because it's, it's not an expected header. Same thing with the parameters. Um, say uh, you get sent something unexpected. So for example, uh, the, um, the way that Teach app, a messaging app uh, used by French government was hacked is that they were enforcing uh, the email domain of the, of the users. However, someone, instead of that, they, they constructed a login that looked like it belonged to that domain, but actual one-time link got sent to the email address uh, that was um, owned by the attacker. And so in most cases, in a lot of cases, uh, your developer backend code would probably just check for ends with, and that would go through, obviously, with us. Uh, if you have 42 crunch protection, that doesn't go through because we know that it's not a proper, uh, proper email address. Uh, then uh, same thing uh, if, for example, something like account balance, for example, it's expected to be positive, but say someone uh, sends a negative value, uh, what happens if your code doesn't expect that? Um, maybe it would behave in some unexpected way, like this particular code fails with a crash, sends back the, the trace records. And so someone can look at that, at that trace and figure out that you're using a MongoDB. And so they can use that against you. Again, in our case, if it's protected, this doesn't go through. We know that it's not the expected input. And even if it went through, but crashed the back end, we would block the output because it's not an expected output. Your exception trace is not something that the API is supposed to be, to be doing. Uh, we also save you from different kinds of injections. Again, now that I know that it's a MongoDB, if I'm an attacker, I could potentially in the uh, I could potentially uh, in my code use the login method and say, for example, I don't have a, a password and I try to log in. I cannot, but I can go 
and try to construct a NoSQL injection uh, by sending, instead of sending a proper password, which I don't know, right, I, I don't know what to type here, uh, I can give a NoSQL injection. And so this is a typical uh, MongoDB NoSQL injection. Instead of providing the actual uh, password value, uh, it just checks whether the password is not empty. Uh, obviously, it is not empty for an existing record. So uh, the call went through and I got the, the token back successfully. Uh, if it is a protected endpoint with foot to crunch uh, API firewall, that will never go through because we know that it's not what you expect. So basically, here's how uh, foot to crunch API firewall and protection protects you from, uh, from any uh, possible uh, attacks based on the contract uh, of your API.